So welcome back, guys. Welcome to the Drama Mamas. We're so excited today. Um, I'm Kathy. I'm Angela. I'm Kristen. Yeah, and today we have a very, very special guest um, coming all the way from North Carolina. Correct, you're joining us. His name is Tommy Warford. We're so, so, so excited to have him on today. How are you doing today, Tommy? I am doing absolutely incredible. It's nice to be here. Oh, yay. Well, thank you so much. Um, I can't tell you how we felt when you had reached out to us and said, hey, guys, I it's love what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, you were like, listen, I like what you guys are doing. I want to be a part of this. And we couldn't have been more prouder. Um, so thanks again for doing that. And we're so excited to be collaborating with you. Um, we know you have some really exciting stuff, all kinds of lined up. Yeah, your next week or so is going to be pretty crazy and hectic, right? Oh, yeah. Next week is uh, it's a busy week. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. So Tommy went ahead and started writing Malcolm X, the musical, I believe, at the age of 14. Correct, Tommy? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. So <laughs> and now you're getting ready to bring it to New York City for the big debut up there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We got invited um, just a few weeks ago to perform at 54 Below. Five Sides 54 Below um, for a Black Rider Showcase. So we are absolutely beaming. It's it's unbelievable. Oh, that's awesome. So if you wouldn't mind, can you tell our listeners how that all started for you um, with that show? And, and here you are coming, and, and it's going to be a wonderful thing. And you got even some local people around here that is joining you, correct? Absolutely, okay. yeah. It's definitely been a journey um, that's kind of crazy to even talk about and think about. I can just see a bunch of images in my head as I try to explain it to you guys. Yeah. Um, I started writing the show at 14 years old uh, as a passion project, really just trying to um, insert myself into the theater world as a writer uh, and trying to tell stories that I had heard growing up and stories that um, hit home close to me uh, with my affiliation. and. Um, Started writing the show at 14, uh, Lake Wells Little Theater, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with Lake Wells Little Theater, they, um, they workshopped it with me and, and put it on the stage for a presentation back in 2020. Uh, and then like Theater Winter Haven, uh, they picked it up and produced it as a full length production uh, in 2021. And then from there, like just staging after staging, like Stetson University, uh, produced it with us and you know did another concert at Theater Winter Haven and now to be invited to New York City it's just like unbelievable I, I can't even I can't even fathom like it's awesome so yeah super exciting we're so excited for you and you're a local for us Central Floridian you grew up in Central Florida yeah Central Florida Lake Wells Florida it's the hometown nice. 863 <laughs> Polk County, we love yeah. it, right? So, how did you get started in the theater? When did this all start? At what age did you really start exploring theater and writing and all of it? Oh, I got in the theater at 12 years old. 12 years old, Theater Winter Haven, they have their homeschool classes, mm -hmm. their midweek homeschool classes that they do. And it literally started as like, trying to hang out with friends and like wanting to be out of the house and that's what led me to be a part of their academy and um you know from there just doing plays you know church musicals and things like that led into really uh seeing it as a, uh, a career path and it's my passion so i can really you know see me doing at this point so so you are writing music that started at what age Oh, the writing of the music started at 14. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so when you started. I started at 14. Right. And um, it, it really was like, you know, I really had always been a fan of music and, and music composition and things like that. But um, going from like writing into, um, I'm sorry, like being a fan into writing was such a big jump. And that, that, that continues. Like even next weekend is like the first time the music from our show will be performed by an actual live band oh, wow. uh, and by their performers in New York City so like that's another step mm -hmm. in the you know evolution and growth of, as a writer is like mm -hmm. seeing everything go from like synth to live orchestration is like I'm I can't even believe it it's so exciting <laughs> are you dying yeah. <laughs> you're all smiles so that I says know. a lot you know 
yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I totally awesome. get that. So like, is it is it hard to make that transition or did it just kind of come naturally from mu- appreciating music to like actually writing it, composing it? Yeah, like the transition is like super, um, it's almost like, like you can't believe you're doing it. You know, like you, music lives in like, if you're a composer, music just lives in your head, right? And then so to go from li- music living in your head and to creating a, like a, let's say a piano demo and you actually like, that music goes from your head into actually being, you know, realized with music and then working with an arranger or um, an orchestrator and hearing that piano score go into a full orchestration is like, you know, you can't even believe that it came, I just as like a humming idea into this full imagined you know, peace. So it's almost like, um, it's like the magic. It's like a magic of like, um, you know, seeing your work start here and then end up there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Unbelievable. I know. um, You know, our focus is kind of around helping moms or dads or grandparents help their children get involved in the theater in a successful way so they become passionate like you clearly are (laughs) and like our children are. How did that work for you and your family? My involvement in the arts wouldn't even, it wouldn't be where it's at without my family. Um, you know, my grandparents paid for my academy, you know, Theodore Woodhaven Academy tuition. Uh, you know, my dad and my mom driving me to every play rehearsal and every mm-hmm. class and every show I wanted to see. Like, you know, that, looking back in hindsight, now being a college student, in the arts like I like wow like mom and dad had to drive me to every rehearsal you know for six weeks long like that is a big commitment and it's a sacrifice and it's an investment uh, and it's one that's paying off but um, you know just thinking about my grandparents my parents my mom specifically because she really did have her hands in the mud when it came to the arts uh, and my involvement in the theater uh, like it's just a it's a tip hat it's a thank you always because um, you know, without them, I wouldn't haven't even been able to explore mm-hmm. theater, um, and let alone be passionate about it. Right. So, yeah, we're mom. very familiar with the driving around part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. the other day I spent literally six hours in the car just driving from one place to the next, taking the kids to their different things. So, yeah. but right. as a mother, yeah. and I'm sure your mother would feel the same, is we it's an absolute privilege to do when we see our kids. Mm-hmm loving something so much yeah. and building family that's one of the things we just absolutely love about it is not only are they learning but you get so close to the people that you're there with in the theater and make friends and your parents make friends and mm-hmm. you get mom groups like <laughs> us that happen there and yeah you know a support system <laughs> kind of built in that's how we kind of came so close is you know this shared all our kids were doing the same thing all the time and so we'd go from show to show to show and sometimes Angela would drive too and I would go and pick them all up or you know Kathy would do the same and we would just kind of juggle it that way and being able to spread it out really kind of made it achievable especially when not all our kids do the same thing Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. I I appreciate the moms that are able to figure out how to do it on their own too Mm -hmm. because that's that's a hell of a feat honestly Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. And, you know, you mentioned, um, you know, being able to meet friends and have friends in that theater family. You know, I think for my parents, they noticed me being a homeschool student that I was lacking some of that that friendship and that that family outside of our home. So my mom really did see my involvement in theater as an investment in my social life. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, the next week I'm taking five Polk County artists Mm -hmm. to New York uh, and they all have been a part of the show in these last you know, two years of developing it. Uh, and so like sowing the seed initially into he needs to be around other kids that are interested in what he's interested in mm-hmm. turns into mm-hmm. investing in like these six kids living yeah. their dream and getting to perform in one of the most I think iconic we may places know two of those in artists, New York. I think we we? do. Um, Sean, is Sean John one of them and KJ is the other, another one? Sean Jean, yeah, yeah. KJ, Kimberly, you know uh, Yaffa. With our community yeah. theater, yeah. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Nice. Awesome, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It really is a small world. <laughs> yes. I mean, it, yeah, theater is a very, very small world. I want to hear more about your New York trip. Tell us about the story of the show. Tell us how we can 
watch you and follow you and, and all that good stuff? The New York trip um, has been like the most, I want to say like exciting slash kind of um, like nerve wracking uh -huh. experiences uh -huh. um, because like I'm in Charlotte right now currently studying musical theater and like my cast is they are in Polk County um, and so our rehearsal schedule is like all virtual wow. uh, and so we're literally preparing for our biggest gig yet and haven't all been able to be in the same place mm -hmm. uh, so that's interesting yeah that's uh, you know with the show like I'm not actually done writing the musical I continue to write it I continue to um, add new songs or new scenes and things like that so you know as we prepare to do the showcase it's also figuring out, you know, what songs we feel will best, you know, um, present the show to the audience and, and give them a feel of what, you know, we're working on. But um, all of those things is like a small um, glimpse into that, like what working in the professional world is going to be like. And that is very exciting. You know, the producer of this showcase, um, she works for 54 Below, and she's also one of the producers on Michael Jackson, the musical, the MJ wow. musical. Wow. Uh, wow. So, like, being in correspondence with her and, like, working with the Broadway producer is a completely different, you know, um, experience yeah. than working with your community theater. I love that as well. But just having <laughs> both experiences, yeah. yes. it just really gives you an, um, a well-rounded view of being an artist, a theater artist. So, yeah. It's awesome. What a great platform for you, right? This is going to be an awesome springboard opportunity, right? I mean, this producer is getting to know you. She's getting to see what you're all about, what you can create. There, I mean, the opportunities are endless for you, Tommy. So, gosh. Yeah, absolutely. And I will add, like, you know, we talked about having friends and, and the, the family that theater is. You know, the reason that we're even, we're even asked to be a part of this showcase uh, is because I about, I want to say, six months ago, became Instagram friends with a young man named Kion Hersey, who was actually uh, the music producer on Hamilton, Dear Evan Hansen, Greatest Showman, and he graduated from um, Berkeley School of Music. And so we started to talk back and forth, and he was kind of giving me advice and things like that on the Malcolm X Project. So when the producer was looking for more theater artists to be showcased at this event, he already knew exactly who he had to, you know, uh, recommend. So I always try to um, encourage other theater artists to make those connections. You know, follow somebody on Facebook, send that DM because you never know what opportunity is going to come from that, you know, uh, correspondence, that, that connection you have with that person. That is a really cool story. And that's kind of what you did for us. <laughs> you yeah. reached out to yeah. us. Yeah, reached out to us. Hey, guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which we are just so thrilled that, that you have. You are a pretty young guy. How old are you? I'm 18. 18? I'm 18 going on 19 in January. Wow, so, Tommy. <laughs> little sound of music reference there. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are so poised and so professional for an 18-year-old. Your family must be so proud of you. <laughs> As a mom, I'm just like, Thank wow. you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. What I'm sure you guys are proud of, of your kids, too, and what yeah. they're doing. You guys are with Lakeland Community, right? Yes. Yeah, and we, they've done awesome. a show at Winter Any Winter show Day. I've seen at Lakeland Community, top tier. Mm -hmm. Yes. Excellent. Well, yes. and same for Winter Haven. We were just over there today for an audition. We, great. We have such great community theaters in this area. We're so fortunate. Yeah, we're super lucky. We've talked before about this wild talent bubble <clears throat> that seems to have been created. Um, and, you know, we've talked maybe it's because we're halfway between Tampa and Orlando. And, you know, we have all mm -hmm. these great theaters around. Um, but our community theaters are definitely not your typical, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm community theaters around the talent that comes to audition and to be a part of the shows is just you know mind-blowing so it's it's great we're we're happy our kids are getting a wonderful mm -hmm. experience um just like you know how i'm sure that you did too what are so. some of the shows that you've done aside from the one that you've written this is gonna sound really funny and it's gonna surprise you guys but i've actually only done one musical that's not the one I wrote. Really? Wow. And it was recently. I, I never, so I was a part of Theater Winter Haven's Academy, but the way that they, that they do it is we do um, classes and then we do showcases. Mm -hmm. But those showcases are very different than being a part, you know, of an actual production with the, you know, six weeks of rehearsal and the tech rehearsals and things like that. Right. 
Um, so I did a lot of showcases. It was like, you know, you're a good man, Charlie Brown, or like, you know, a skit here and there. But I recently actually did my first musical other than the Malcolm X show, and it was Frozen. Oh my gosh. I played, uh, yes. I played the Bishop of Arendelle uh, in <laughs> Theater Winter Haven's Frozen production uh, just last spring, just last and year, that was yeah. really fun. Oh, we uh, and get, getting to see like, like yeah, all of the kids get excited like when Elsa sang Let It Go it was yeah. like super super rewarding so um, I've actually only done the Malcolm X show and the Elsa show which are very different, very different. but I'm really happy that I've gotten to be a part of both of those so. <laughs> well then I saw you because we went to that one it was yeah, a great yeah, show yeah we yep. saw you that was me in the big hat you were that was great me. So. <laughs> yeah. do you hope to do more musicals or are you more focusing on writing and composing right now it's just writing mm -hmm. it's really just writing like for me acting in shows is really just a way to get my foot in the door so i can become a creative mm -hmm. it really is you know um my dream really is to be a writer i want to also be a producer my like i was talking to a friend earlier my end goal dream is to actually open my own performing arts center Wow. Um, like the Dr. Phillips Performing Arts, like yeah. the Tommy Wilford Performing Arts Center yeah. Auditorium. That's like my goal. Um, that way I can create a space for other artists to come in and work on their shows or mm -hmm. rehearsal space or classrooms for dancers and you know, choreographers to have the space to create and, and cultivate um, you know, the next generation of talent when I'm in that space to do. Um, you know, one of the people that I really look up to is Dan Chesnica uh, mm -hmm. from Theater Winter Haven. And like, yes. he's like, like really been a great role model and um, mentor for me. So if I can be that to like the next generation of theater makers when I'm his age, then that's really, you've done it. that's yeah, really yeah. where my eyes like, are like box at. checked, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. 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 That's awesome. Oh, an amazing yeah. goal and we know the, the space and the, the place to do those things is so important because that mm -hmm. can sometimes be a challenge for small theaters yeah we've joked Absolutely. about i don't know does north carolina do the powerball like the lottery say again does north carolina oh yeah Okay. Oh, yeah, the line, the line of the gas station. <laughs> Sorry, that's how my brain works. I'm all over the place. But uh, the reason why I bring that up, Tommy, is because we have joked, like, we're going to go, we're going to get some tickets, and if we win, or if any one of us wins. Because it's like $2 billion. Right. It, yeah. Yeah. With a B, like, <laughs> yeah. I can't that money. But no. what would we do with it? How do you pay that forward, you know? Yeah. You build um, a musical. The theater. first thing you do is donate to a musical called Malcolm X. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you got it. That's the first thing you do. Done done. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, we've <laughs> joked about building a musical theater, you know, here in Lakeland, a, a bigger one that everyone can use. But we joke about that. If we ever win, yeah, we're going like, to put that yeah, money back in. They're, not a, they're yeah. not a cheap thing to, like, put together, uh, surprisingly, because mm -hmm. you think it's, oh, it's just the building, but it's not, because if you're going to do you know, theater, then you need a fly system and all of that. And that's, you know, millions of dollars to build that kind of facility. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, we've exactly. seen the way it's changed our children's lives. Um, mm -hmm. it, when we first mm -hmm. moved here to Lakeland about six years ago, we were just kind of floating around trying different things. And it's when my children got into the theater, I just, it was like a spark went off in them. And they, mm -hmm. they're, they're depressed when they're not on stage. <laughs> like when there's a lull between shows or something, they... They feel it, so yeah. we want to do whatever we can to just build up the theaters and build up the children and help the parents be successful with that. Yeah. I can definitely relate. That was actually, that's so funny that you said that because that's literally the same thing my mom said to me one time when I finished a play. Oh. I was really down in the dumps. And she was like, Tommy, there's this pattern. Like, you do a show and everything's good in life. And then you're not doing a show and it's just like, woe is me. Mm -hmm. And she's like, what is this? And that's when I knew Oh, like this is my passion because mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I'm not happy. Right. Yeah. You know, and so uh, you know, moms, all moms, they got that. They got that nick. They got that nick. You know, they know. We know. We always know, moms. Know. Know. We know. It's a good thing you to know. have that because there's no handbook for the rest of it. No. No. It just flying mm -hmm. by the seat of your pants. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. You're just yeah. trying to do whatever you can to support your kids so that they can be happy. Yeah. And, you know, that's that's just really what we're trying to do. And, uh, you know, like Angela said, if we can help educate and promote and, you know, have great people like you on that can share, you know, th what happened with them, um, good and bad, right? Because you've mm -hmm. gone down this road a little bit. You've, I'm sure you've seen some potholes and, you know, mm -hmm. all of that, you know where to go and what turns not to make and, you know, um, 
when we all started, we knew nothing. Like deer in headlights, showing up to an audition, maybe had music, maybe didn't. Um, Mm -hmm. We had no idea what to expect. You know, you sit in an auditorium for like the parent meeting and, you know, you're surrounded by people that already know everybody. It can be a little intimidating, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, luckily our kids did good. They stuck through it. We found each other. And so we just want to be able to spread that, um, you know, to other parents that are just getting into this, right? Or maybe they're a little hesitant Mm -hmm. because they're not quite sure. Like everybody knows how to get their kid into soccer or baseball. Right. (laughs) But not everybody knows how to get their kid into musical theater. Or or composing. Yeah. Or composing. And writing. Like that's also another, you know, area. Like you have found your way through was that a straightforward process for you or did you really have to kind of stumble through it like in the dark almost you know like honestly it was one of those things for me where i wanted to be in shows but i i there weren't any roles for me and the show is being selected you know by the theater company and so i felt like if i'm going to be the lead in the show i have to write my way into being the lead of a show and so that's how i got into writing it was like, let me write a show where I can be at the forefront and my friends, Sean, KJ, yeah. can be at the forefront. So I feel like that is um, that that was very unique to me in my situation. But with your kids, I mean, like or someone else's kids, they may get into acting and be like, I really like set design or I really like costuming. And they find that way. You know, um, my instructor here at school, his name is Corey Mitchell. He was the first um theater educator to actually be awarded with the Tony Award for theater education. And so he got into theater as an actor and then was like, I really want to teach. And so I feel like theater is that that melting pot of so many different industries that once you enter in as an actor, you can become a writer. Or you enter in as a lighting designer, you can become an actor. It's just following where your heart leads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great point. I love that. That is a great point. Yeah. As we always say, like, we think the kids should tech a show or, you know, do different different pieces of the show because you never know what's going to stick. It's kind of like when yes. I was growing up, my mom let me try everything. I got to do horseback mm-hmm. riding and gymnastics and all those different <laughs> things, and she let me try it all till I really found what stuck with me. So it's kind of what you're saying. Get in the theater and then yeah. try the different pieces of it, and you never know where you're going to land. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I like acting in Frozen, but I also was doing all the flies. So because I only was in really two scenes, right. yeah. I would get out of my bishop costume and then I would drop the castle oh, and I would, you know, gosh. bring in the trees. And like, you know, being an actor in the show and also taking the show, it helped me see that theater is not about one person. It's not just about Elsa on stage. Right. Yeah. It's about the entire production. And we're all helping to make this magnificent show possible for the audience. Yes, and we try to tell the kids that all the time. No part is a small part. It doesn't matter what you are. You may not be the lead. You might be a a butterfly or a squirrel or something. It it all all comes together. to Everyone is important, from the people on the stage, Mm -hmm. the people behind the stage, the people that make the costumes and everything else. Yeah. And I Just think be the best you butterfly you can be. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's right. That's right. Exactly. And when you can do all the different parts, I think it really helps you appreciate the other pieces, right? Because you've mm-hmm. walked a day in those shoes. You know what it's like now for those fly guys or girls. <clears throat> that is a difficult feat, right? To be mm-hmm. up there, to hold, make sure the balances are right, make sure you're letting go at the right time, make sure you're not yeah. doing it too fast, make sure you're not... Your hand doesn't get in the way. Your hand, you're not hitting anybody. I mean, that's like, you know, a crazy part of the show. So, you know, you've been able to do that piece. So now I bet every show now, like when you're doing Malcolm, if you have flies, I don't know if you have flies in your show. But, you know, you're able to appreciate that part and you know what it takes. Yeah. Right. And as as a theater maker, when I'm doing the full productions of Malcolm, like we did our production at Stetson University, like that was one moment for me where I kind of felt, alone because we had done our show at theater winter haven and you've seen their shows there they have a great team Mm -hmm. and when i did our show at stetson university in the land like i was kind of in charge of almost every aspect of production i had people that would help but not at the level that theater winter haven really puts in into their shows Mm -hmm. and so having the understanding of like this is what a fly person goes through this is what a tech person goes through this is what an actor goes through I was able to 
kind of put my feet in their shoes and understand like, okay, like this stage manager is mad because of this. Right. This yeah. actor is not able to get to his place because of this. Mm -hmm. And when you're only in one aspect, it's hard for you to see from someone else's perspective. Mm -hmm. So being a playwright, being a producer, it really does give me, you know, a great position to be able to see where everyone's coming from when they're entering in their space yeah, that's as a creative. Yeah, that 50,000 foot view that you can pull back to and be like, yeah, okay, exactly. I, I see all the moving parts. All the pieces, how they come right. together. Yeah. Do you have any projects you're working on now? I mean, you're probably pretty focused on school and Malcolm X. No, I actually do. And I'm, I'm so excited that you asked me that yeah, since you guys, are, you, guys are in, you guys are in Lakeland, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I've actually been writing a film musical with a young lady who goes to Harrison School of the Arts. Oh, nice. uh, and we are really excited to be launching it. We're going to be starting to film it next month when I'm on Christmas break. And uh, I'm not going to spoil too much of it, but the idea behind the musical is basically all of the things that high schoolers go through from freshman year to senior year. And we're speaking to it... Um, we're calling it uh, the the new improved high school musical, uh, and where we're really speaking to the issues that high schoolers deal with. Like no one gives the freshmen a rule book that says, "Hey, like these are the do's and don'ts, and here's how you're gonna survive these next four years." Mm -hmm. uh, and then no one gives the senior like, "This is how we're entering into the collegiate world, or entering into the workforce is gonna be." And so we've created these characters, and they all have their own. Um, ambitions and weights on their shoulders and parents and peers talking to them and we've created a really nice piece it has seven songs plus a 60 page script and screenplay that she wrote and we're hopefully going to be um you know filming it right there in lakeland and getting a lot of harrison school of the arts um kids involved with it so it's going to be it's going to be fun That's to be awesome. a part of it. that is so, amazing yeah. how exciting i know right we'll have to yeah. have you guys we back watch? on once you're working yeah. on that and we yeah. can talk about it oh, yeah yeah absolutely and i'm my co-writer on that is um Emma Peterson, and she's just a fa fabulous writer. And then um, also have the opportunity of letting my my theater little brother, talk about the family in theater, uh, Thomas Dobrat, who uh, also has been a part of Theater Winterhaven Academy and is now a freshman at Harrison School of the Arts you know to do him. some choreography. So yeah. it's going to be fun. He was in Susicle yeah. with our kids, oh, the yes. mayor. Oh, yeah, right. yes. Thomas. Yes. Oh, oh he's that. awesome. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, this yes. is so exciting. I think he adored him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great. And and something about Thomas that's really cool is Thomas has been a part of every Malcolm X show behind the scenes. Oh, that's uh, cool. And so his parents, like, they let him come with me to Orlando. We did a show at Orlando Shakespeare Theater. We did a show at Stetson University. And they've just been, like, really supportive parents also and saying, like, yeah, we're going to trust this 18-year-old kid <laughs> with our son <laughs> to go and, like, do shows. And, um, and we're talking about theater parents who are supportive, we have to mention the Dobrats family because they are also, with uh, Thomas and their daughter Emma before, really supportive in, in their kids as well. well that's so. super exciting. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We know a lot of the kids. My daughter is actually a freshman at um, Harrison as well, so that will cool. be really exciting to see. Let's get her, let's get her in it. Let's yeah, get this cast so. going. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> let's do it. How yes. fun. So at school, what are you focusing on? Or is there like a, I'm, I don't know anything about the curriculum. Is there like certain things you focus on throughout like a progression with your schooling or do you get to kind of tailor what you want? How does that work? Absolutely. So I'm a part of the musical theater track on a program called the Theater Gap Initiative. Uh, it was founded by, like I said, Tony Award winning Corey Mitchell. And it's actually a gap year program housed at a college here in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina with the intention of placing us in one of the top BFA schools next fall. Okay. Um, so I applied to UArts, Manhattan School of Music, NYU, mm -hmm. Emerson, and those are all my dream schools to get into. And something that this gap year program is doing is it's letting us learn from professionals before college. Mm -hmm. That way that it, um, it really like help solidify our gifts and um, make us even stronger performers for our, our auditions mm -hmm. into, um, you know, colleges and BFA programs, I'll say, for musical theater, because this is something that your, your kids would probably go through if they want to continue. You know, like, I believe um, Pace, which is a really popular school in New York, mm -hmm. they receive 10,000 applicants every year for their wow. musical theater program. <laughs> and wow. then they call back like 500. Mm -hmm. And then out of the 500 they call back, 
They only accept 24. So it's a really, really large pool of talent and not enough schools and not enough programs. And so Theater Gap Initiative is a program that's saying, let's take you, we'll train you, and then we'll send you out an even stronger performer mm -hmm. into those BFA programs. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where I'm at right now. And I'm having a blast. Um, you know, our, our instructors, they are top tier, either from here, from New York, from Charlotte. They've worked all around. And um, yeah, they're awesome. They're really awesome. It's been a great program. What is that audition process to get into those programs? What does that entail exactly? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> so we've been here since August and we don't leave till March. And like it's, you have to do three monologues, okay. two songs, a dance audition and a wild card. Oh. And so, like, that's a lot of material to, to prepare for an audition. Yeah. And um, there's also something they call pre-screens. And pre-screens is like, I'm going to send you my material, me performing it. They'll watch it. And then based off that pre-screen, they'll decide if they want you to audition. So it's not your audition. It's a prerequisite to see if they want you to audition. Wow. It is a very competitive, yeah, yeah it's wow. very competitive to get into. And um, that's why this program is so needed and why I'm so happy my mom found it. Um, because I feel like this coming this um, winter, this spring, I'm going to be admitted into so many programs just based off of my resume, my experiences of my own professional work, plus the academic training that I'm getting from them. It's really a great initiative. So. Yeah, it sounds fantastic. I love that they're bridging that gap, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, yeah, definitely, because it is so competitive. Yes, yeah. and with the supportive, and I mean, I'm sure, Tommy, with all of your work and the success of Malcolm X the Musical, I'm sure that that is going to be a huge feather in your cap to oh, get yeah. into your dream school. Sounds you know? like they'd be lucky to have you. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Hey, if you need a letter of reference, you can just contact us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll for you. That is a big, that is a big part of it. You know, um, I can't stress like to myself even mentors, like mentors, 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 find yourself mentors. Anywhere I go, when I see a show, I, I'm like, is the writer here? Can I meet the writer? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to meet the writer. Can I talk to the producer? And sometimes like people look at me and they're like, get out of here. Like, who are you? <laughs> and then sometimes they're like, yeah, like he's actually here. Like I was able to connect with the Tony Award winning Michael R. Jackson, who wrote the A Strange Loop musical oh, yeah. uh, that got like 13 Tony nominations. Yeah. And like connecting with him and like having him as like, started off as like answering some questions, turned into a mentorship, turned into a friendship. Mm -hmm. And like having that, you know, this guy has a show on Broadway with 13 Tony nominations. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. And so one thing our instructors tell us is like, find the person whose career you want mm -hmm. and follow their blueprint talk to them, you know, grow that connection. Uh, and so that is, that is definitely like, that is a recommendation, mentorship and things like that. You know, I'm always, always building, uh, building that up. That's why I contacted the drama moms yeah. <laughs> because I wanted to have that, uh, you know, even more connection in the, in the Florida, you know, theater scene as well. So. Well, it sounds like you, you don't, you're saying don't be afraid to get rejected. Like put yourself out there and no. make as many connections as you can. You're going to hear a lot of no's, but then you might hear that one yes that really takes you to the next level. Yeah, you just need that one. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I don't know how many no's I got to producing Malcolm X the first time but for the first show. Like there was so many no's. It was like, what? <laughs> like, and, and people like, you want to do a music about who and where? Like, no. Uh, but finding Theater Winterhaven and being like, yes, we're going to help you with this. There you go. Like, you got to get, you know, 10 no's to get one yes. Right. You know? I really feel like we're really lucky to get to know you right now because you're destined for great things. And yeah, one day totally. we're going to be like, oh, oh we know you. him. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll sit in the audience and be like, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> he was the bishop. No, this is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is going to, no. That? I feel the same way. This is this has to be like a, a TV show or something, guys. This is super cool. Like this concept is really original. I, I have never heard of anything like this. So you know, kudos to you guys as well. Doing some research in the beginning too. Like uh, we don't we haven't found anybody that kind of fills this niche. You know, mm -hmm. 
I mean, yeah. there's I'm sure there's other there's other mom shows out there, you know. Right. Uh, but nobody that talks about theater stuff, nobody that's mm-hmm. trying to help other new parents who are like new to this scene to move their mm-hmm. the ball forward over there with them, like you know. The, the idea actually came to us. We were sitting at <laughs> Theater Winter Haven yeah, we were. while our kids were at a callback for Susical Jr. And we were joking, like, oh, we should make a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> to call we were it sitting drama there, mamas. like, for hours. <laughs> yes. Well, we just sit around and cut each other up. Honestly. Yes, we do. Yeah. We do. And we spend a lot of time laughing. The whole term, like, drama mama is really a play on words because we are not, you know, dramatic, like, crazy people right. you know like dance moms and those kind of crazy that people is not <laughs> no that is so not us i don't We're know i'm super... kind of dramatic well you're a little bit <laughs> There's always moms. but we rein you in oh i've seen i've seen dance moms you guys are not as bad as those moms nor do we want to be. Abby Lee Miller. <laughs> We're all about promoting the positive. That yes. We're very Good. serious about that. Yes. Yeah, so there's we... no place for hate and trash talk and all no. of that nonsense. No. There's so who are your kids in, in Susicle? Because I saw Susicle in a final it? dress rehearsal. Okay. So oh, my gosh. My daughter was JoJo. And mine was... Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mine yeah. was Gertrude McFuzz. Yes. And, yeah, and Gabby's was Baby Kangaroo. Okay, so... Leads. Just leads all around. <laughs> yeah. We were a little shocked because that was our first time there. They didn't know us. Yeah, so we were they, super yes. thrilled and had a really, really good experience. And like you they say, did. Dan is amazing. He was at every show talking to the kids and yes. even yes. encouraging them. Yes. Like, oh, you guys do great. Mm-hmm. Knows all the kids by name. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's just amazing. Sarah Kaplan yeah. is the director. Yeah. And she mm-hmm. is oh, she's yeah. just awesome. I love yeah. her to death. Yeah. 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 Super supportive. They, but yet... The, you know, gets to business, mm-hmm. takes it very seriously. Right. You we know. volunteer right. backstage, um, which is kind of what we do. I mean, we just have always mm-hmm. done that. Mm-hmm. And um, seeing their facility back there is like completely different mm-hmm. than anything we yeah. have experienced so far up to that point. And um, it's it's just it's neat mm-hmm. to kind of like follow the kids, so they're going to other facilities, and then we're getting to follow them. We're mm-hmm. learning and seeing mm-hmm. all the new stuff that mm-hmm. they're seeing, like. It's tightening our relationships with our kids mm-hmm. too. I feel like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. definitely. So it's not just about I mean, supporting them, you know. You talked about Theater Winterhaven um, being supportive. Like I, I will never argue on that one. Yeah. <laughs> like they've been so supportive. And Dan texted me just like three days ago. I was like, "You ready for NYC? Anything we can do to help?" I'm like, "Like y'all have helped so much." Yeah. And to still be like, "How can we help?" I'm like, "I don't know how you help, Dan." I'm like. This is like Broadway. Like, how do you help with that? But like, the fact that you're like invested that much yes. to help yeah. when you've already propelled me to such a great height, mm-hmm. it just speaks to how much they really are for the community. Yes. Like, they are a community Absolutely. theater. Yeah. And I've heard the same about Lakeland Community. Mm-hmm. And I've heard the same about, you know, Lake Wells. I, I know the same about Lake Wells Little Theater and Haines City. Like, we do have a blessed um, theater community in Polk County. It's kind of unbelievable. It is. Think about it. Yeah. yeah, it really is. It is. Just the sheer amount of talent that's out oh, here. Oh, gosh, I know. Every time you go and you see a show, even if it's not one we're, like, really involved in, just going mm-hmm. and seeing mm-hmm. it, it just knocks your socks yeah. off. Last yeah. night we went, speaking of Harrison, we went and saw Mary Poppins there. Mary Poppins. And mm-hmm. holy crap. that Their <laughs> show's just, like, yeah. like goosebumps when you watch them. Mm-hmm. They're so good. Yeah. And mm-hmm. when... Um, you know, the lead flew in as Mary Poppins across the stage. Like, everybody just, like, lost mm-hmm. their shit. They just <laughs> yeah. totally yeah, lost it. It was it. amazing. And then they and step in time. Inter- it, interesting part about um, Mary Mary Poppins, I don't know if you guys know Janiyah, but, like, she oh, was, like, yeah. at the Jimmy's last year. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, was really represented us there. And, like, yes. that's awesome. You know, she like, we got some Polk County kids coming up. They're I coming know. up. We're represented. We really are. Yeah, we follow us. her pretty closely because she, her – voice teacher jordan jones is coaches yeah. our children as well so we've kind of gotten to know nice. her through that and yeah watch yes. the jimmies and just it was amazing yeah you better scoop her up get her in one of your shows yeah yeah i'm trying listen <laughs> I, i've been trying you don't understand so this is actually a really cool story um i met her at the juneteenth uh this the an- inaugural juneteenth celebration that winter haven put on in 2021 and we were performing Malcolm X was performing a set and she was performing a song and like when she performed I was like I I need her like I need her like in this show and like every single time we do it there's something it was either it's Harrison or it's the Jimmy's Mm -hmm. or it's something getting in the way 
Um, but we have a, a production that we're doing at the historic Ritz Theater downtown Winter Haven mm-hmm. in February. And like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try again. I'm gonna cast my ballot again, and we'll see what happens because she's definitely. <laughs> Really talented. Oh, we'll see if we can help on, get on our end. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see if we can't help connect those. That yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Help me out. So how yeah. can we kind of track you with Malcolm X next week? When is it showing yeah. and how can we keep yes. up with everything? So Malcolm X, we, um, we fly into New York on Saturday night. Nice. Okay. And uh, we, have a, we have a rehearsal from 12 to 2 at 54 Below. We hit the stage at 9.30. And they're going to be doing lots of coverage on the 54 Below Instagram and Facebook page, okay. um, as they do with all their, their shows that they do. We're going to be posting things on our social medias and things like that. And I'm hoping to really, if I have the time to, um, kind of vlog the experience and, and be able to sh- you know, share that vlog with everybody and um, you know, share that. Because it really has been a journey uh, that which so many you know, Polk County arts people have helped with. And um, it's, a, it's a win for everybody. It's, it's, it's huge. So thank you guys, really, really and thank you for contributing as oh, well. Yeah, well. Absolutely, oh, we'll get the word yeah. out as much as we can. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Do you have any advice for little ones getting into the theater and something that could help them? Yes, I would say don't be afraid to be rejected. Mm-hmm. Always ask. Like, you have to voice what you want. If you don't voice what you want, you're never going to get it. Mm-hmm. And so many people are afraid of the no that they risk it for the yes. Mm-hmm. And so if I don't say, Theater Winterhaven, I want you to produce my musical, they're never going to be able to know if, how they can help me. And if I don't go to this 54 Below thing and shake every producer's hand and meet every actor and every theater maker and say, I would love to grow a collaboration with you or work with you on something, they're not going to be checking for that want that I have. Mm-hmm. So that's my advice. Know what you want, voice what you want, and don't be afraid to get a no because yeses will come. I absolutely love that because that's kind of the reason we're sitting here because you're not afraid of the no. Because <laughs> if it yeah, were up to me, I would hide in a corner yes. and say, oh, we can't do a podcast. I'm terrified of the no. Mm-hmm. Well, it doesn't seem like it because you just kind of propelled us into this. And <laughs> one day we like, we're doing this and then three days later we're you know recording our first podcast and we've got a website and everything else. And so... I love what you're saying. Yes. Don't be scared. Awesome. Yeah. Chase after your dreams, yes. right? Absolutely. Thank you guys so much. This has been awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank absolutely you. thrilled. Yes. You're an amazing person. Yes. I see great things in your future, and I love your positive attitude and the way you're encouraging and bringing up mm-hmm. other young actors and playwrights. And thank you. Thank you for what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. And thank you guys for what you're doing. And one little plug. Do it. Make sure to send your kids to Theater Winter Haven Academy Summer Camp because I'm going to be one of the counselors there. Yes. And I would love to work with your kids. Nice. I want to work with your kids. Yes. And so, yeah, this summer, Theater Winter Haven Academy, do summer camp. We love <laughs> summer camp. <laughs> love it. Love thank it. you yes. so much. And I'll be there. Break a leg next week. Yes, break I'll a leg. Yes, absolutely. We can't wait to see yes. you. We're going to follow you. Yes. Absolutely. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Bye.